Hello again, I uh, hope you guys are staying safe, working back on the Fiesta and uh, just a couple of little jobs. I have finally managed to actually stick a FPE sticker on and the Bird Cup sticker from when me and Zach went over to uh, watch the Bird Cup racing last year. And if you haven't already seen that video, check it out. Uh, I've also put on my Steve O Memorial sticker uh, for the late great friend of ours, Steve O, who passed away. And um, yeah, just been tinkering around with other bits and bobs. I did dig out my spare TH Line Schmidt sensor and I offered that on the car because I just wanted to see uh, later on down the line. I do fancy running a set of them as well at some point with maybe a set of track tyres for when I'm actually up and running and taking it to track days. So yeah, I just thought I'd uh, offer it up and see how it looked, whether or not I'd paint the uh, center's body color or white, or I do like the polished look. So that's something to think about later on down the line. I think it looked pretty cool. Another little thing that I've been tinkering around with is the grill. And I've got this grill off of Martine. And uh, you would have noticed before when I had the supercharger, I was running a charge cooler radiator in here. So the front panel is kind of non-existent. I ended up cutting it all the way putting in two flat panels with loads of holes punched in it so there's no actual mounting points for a grill so at the moment I'm trying to engineer a way of mounting the grill in the holes that I had for the charge cooler radiator uh, and this is uh, believe it or not this is a US spec grill and uh, Martin had already like ground off the where the Ford was written so I need to come up with a new plaque or badge or something that I could put here uh, if you've got any suggestions for that let me know obviously I can machine something out or do something funky down there but yeah basically I've got two little inserts that I've machined on the lathe and I've bodged a, a threaded bar bent threaded bar through the bottom of the grill so it sits in that and then I've got to come up with some kind of bracket that then mounts it to the, the riv nuts that I had the um, the old radiator mounted to is the plan and then uh, that should be pretty sturdy then just trying to work out sort of whether it's too far forward though. Currently, it looks there or thereabouts. I don't think it's ever going to be 100% where it should be, but if I can get it close, I think it'll look better than a, a big gaping hole. And I've, I think I prefer to run a grill than the uh, aluminium one that I started making, just because with the grill, it still looks like a Fiesta. So that's the plan. All right, so I've just made up this little bracket out of cardboard and I've transposed that onto a little bit of aluminium. So I'm just gonna drill it, cut this out, fold it up, and then offer it up and see if that's gonna work for two top tabs to mount it to the car. So that's the top mounts made up. I am gonna pop rivet these in, but I just used a little self-tapper just to see, make sure I've cleared the, the web that's under here, bolts into the rib nut that originally held the radiator that I had on the front in place. Uh, but as I've only got support at either end, I think I'm going to need to put something in the middle because it's going to flap about a bit. And obviously I've got two holes here where the original support would have gone onto the, the front panel had I not cut it away. So what I'm thinking, just made up this little cardboard template and I think I'm going to fold that up back on itself and sit something like that and I can get two fixings through there and I'll put a couple of rib nuts in my folded removable front panel and actually give it some support in the middle and maybe I'll bang a couple of swaged holes in it as well whilst I'm at it because race car Okay, so these are the bent bits of studding I was telling you about. I admit they look a bit a bit dodgy, but I was thinking by the time I've sort of bonded them in, sanded them up, painted it all black, I'm gonna do some little tubes that are gonna wind down onto here. I'm gonna put a little step in the bottom of them on the lathe. Uh, I've already done them, already did these, which go into the holes that I had the radiator on before. But I think I'm gonna, have this as part of the tube that goes onto 
this piece. So I'll return that sort of size end on that. I've got a bit of height adjustment on this so I can get the grill where I want it. And then this will locate into these two holes. And then I've also got my middle bracket with the uh, Swiss cheese flared holes in. And I've had to bolt that up to my removable front panel. And then I'm picking up on the top and these little rivnuts again, these held the old uh, charge cooler rad in. Had the inlet pipe up here and the outlet pipe down there. It was quite a good design actually. It's one of those things that I wish I never got rid of, but hey ho, charge cooler rad's in the boot now. And yeah, these are the brackets on, on either end. So obviously I paint it all black, paint all the brackets black as well so they won't stand out too much. So yeah, just quickly go and fire up old Bessie, the lathe, which I've had to repair because uh, the other day I was using it to do spaces for all the coil and plug plates and uh, the motor went pop and knocked out all of the power in the house. So I stripped down the motor and found that there's some swarf that had obviously bridged over and shorted out the uh, one of the terminals inside to the casing. So luckily it was an easy fix. So that's the little cylinders turned down with a little step in it and they locate in those holes. On the threaded bars, I've got the top mounts and the middle mount and that's the grill. Pretty much mounted. As I said, I'll take it all off, paint it all black and all the brackets black so they don't stand out too much. But yeah, that was a long winded job considering I did originally have a proper front panel and uh, a normal grill would have just bolted straight up before, but something to do. And whilst I got the lathe out, I want to try and make a little uh, bracket for my shift light and my oil warning light. So I need to turn down a little steel collar. And what I'm going to do, as I haven't got any solid steel bar, these it's all aluminium and stuff, um, I'm going to chop this down, steel bar, and I'm going to make use of this thread at either end. Basically replicate that and then I can weld the tabs that go onto the warning lights. I can just weld one of those on and I think I'm going to do a little link plate that then mounts the other one, the other light onto this light, is the plan. So what I'm aiming to do, take this coating off and I'm going to try and weld that to that and then I'm going to make a little bracket that joins this one to that one and I'll probably cut this bit off because I don't need that. See so yeah, how well this works. I'd like to TIG it, but obviously lockdown, I don't have access to the TIG here, so it's gonna have to be a bubblegum MIG, I'm afraid. So that's it welded on. Not the prettiest, but it'll do. And then now I just need to make a little bridge piece to connect those two mounts together. I'll probably just pop rivet them through the front. Lick of paint. That should be good to go. So now all we've got to do is just uh, pop rivet this plate on there, the other plate on here. Gave me a quick dusting of satin black, so now I can stick the lights back on the top and mount it onto the dash and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, and I've wanged a little uh, lightweight hole in the middle of it, because race car. So that's the two lights mounted on the bracket. Just gonna bolt it onto the dash and uh, see what it's like for position. That's them all mounted up. Driving position here looks pretty clear. So I can obviously see my shift light and my oil light if that ever comes on. Got to shut down quick. But fingers crossed that shouldn't that shouldn't light up. Yeah, pretty pleased with how that come out. Massively over-engineered bracket as always. Right, so I've pulled the dash back out and I'm in the process of trying to sort out my gauge cluster. So I've added my Monster Taco, my Speedo, my two boost gauges and some of the warning lights. Um, I've wired them all up as best as I can. Put this plug on the end. But I think I've messed up, so I'm going to have to go back through the wiring on the original dashboard plug and uh, just see where I've gone wrong, because I can't get the indicators to work on the car at the moment. Um, I've also added these little labels using my 
my little punch dymo thing. It just literally like embosses this little red tape. It's proper like old school way of doing labels. So I've got my oil battery indicators, high beam, little note, don't be stupid. For like all the old race cars that used to have the uh, mechanics leaving notes for the drivers not to break or crash. And I've named the uh, high pressure turbo is going to be Heidi and the low pressure turbo is going to be Lola. Um, so yeah, that's all together as an assembly. I might have to swap some of the pins around, some of the wires around on this. Um, yeah, I kind of got involved in that the other night. I didn't really film me putting that all together, but you don't need to see that all go together. And then back around here, yeah, the wiring is proving a bit of a problem. Uh, I bought myself a cheap probe, and I've, Adam's lent me a, a probe as well to try and work out why my indicators aren't working. I don't know whether I'm missing a ground or something. The, the alarm will actually flash the bulbs, so the circuit's good, the grounds seem to be good, but because I've hacked up the... Um, the cluster plug I think I might have I think I might have messed something up along the way so hopefully I can get that resolved today I even ordered a new little flasher relay because I thought it might have been that but it's not I just love wiring got my new lambda sensor turn up hopefully it's a genuine Bosch one if it's a fake one the box looks pretty pretty legit yeah because the last one whilst we were mapping Squiz's car it fell out the back of it live mapping it and uh, cocked it up so hopefully this uh, should remedy the fact that I need an AFR gauge in the car for when we start setting up the, the Fiesta. Okay, so I've spent probably a couple of hours now probing stuff, putting stuff about, checking all the earths, changing out the relay, uh, or the relay, oh, swap the flasher relay. I've um, swapped out three different types of hazard light switch and it's been doing weird stuff, so something's obviously awry. I snipped my multi-plug off and rewired up the original dash clocks. I determined that all the little bulbs that I've got don't work, so I've literally just bridged, this is the indicator flasher. Um, so now I can get the oil warning light up for the indicator, still doesn't work. Um, but now, which I didn't have before, if I press the hazard light switch, we've got indicators flashing. So the hazards work on all four corners. So I think it must be a problem with this thing. And looking at it, I mean, the plugs are always pretty rubbish on these. Another weird thing that it's doing is if I go on side light, my full beam light comes on on the dash. And if you watch the uh, speedo glitches, which I don't think is right. Um, so the side lights are on, headlights are on. Looking at this, I can flash my, oh, this is what I hate about wiring. You can see things, old connectors and old wires. So I can flash my high beams flesh but I can't click it on permanent oh I can now no I can't still go do indicators there's something still not quite right and this sort of stuff really does my head in and I did want to get the loom all redone and I still do plan on getting the loom all redone because this is the sort of stuff that will end up causing me to break down at the side of the road and I'm going to try and get Darren's dad to do it when all of the coronavirus is over because yeah I can't be dealing with just the hotchpotch of craziness and the rat's nest and all of the brittle wires and all the bad earths. It'll let the car down in the long run. So yeah, carry on. I'm trying to work this one out. You just gotta look up inside the plugs and see how manky the uh, the actual terminals are. I just remembered Martin dropped loads of parts off. And looking through his box, I have indicator stalks hopefully they clip onto my plugs and oh yes I've got brand new sweet nice one martini you save it hopefully this will sort it out a few moments later okay so i've spent many an hour trying to figure out this wiring issue and obviously uh thanks to everyone on instagram and uh on facebook for lending your opinions and help and ideas of things to check 
it's obviously or was obvious that it was some form of earth issue so I've redone all the earths on all of the uh, four corners of the car where the lights are, checked all the bulbs, swapped some bulbs out just to again I was clutching at straws checking everything. I've gone through with a probe and checked all the earths in and around the plugs and the column and everything seemed alright but I was missing one earth and it transpires the issue all along was down the back of my fuse box there's a little, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little uh, ring terminal that one down there and it transpires that that was down the back and wasn't earthed out onto the body shell so I screwed that up there and now we have ignition lights, side lights, headlights, full beams and we got ourselves some indicators. Simple fix, but I now need to go through the whole loom and tidy it up as best as I can until such time as uh, I can get the car up and running and then I'll get it over to Darren's dad, Keith, and he's gonna do me a full motorsport loom for it because I can't live with this craziness. You know, this is like, as I said, gonna let the car down and there is the potential for probably a fire uh, if I leave it as it is. I'll, I'll check it all out, I'll make sure it's as good as it can be, but going forward it needs a proper loom in it. And uh, like looking at the earths and stuff, some of the um, some of the grounds and earths that go to the backlights, you know, where the copper wire's gone black, where the um, like moisture and it's kind of tarnished the copper inside the wires, so definitely need to treat it to some decent wiring. But yeah, happy with that, at least I got it fixed because it was doing my head in. Gotta love old car, old car looms and their quirky issues. Okay, so this actually looks like uh, the parcel from Martin. Let's give this an open. See what we got inside. Gauge pod, cage mounted gauge pod, some cake, uh, what's that say? Cake merge pigeons. Interesting. Nice one. Split rim bolts. It's going to come in handy for what's uh, coming over from Stefan next time. Treat yourself. Ah, oh, spoof bottles. These are awesome. I think you're supposed to put them on top of your cup of coffee and let them soften up with the heat and steam. But they are delish. nice and this is the adjuster for the pedal box that I bought off him that came out of his blue car so this is the bias adjuster that um, tweaks the balance bar on the front front and back brakes uh, master cylinders so I need to work out how to fit that and where I'm gonna have my adjustment knob awesome that's more these are Venco pony drops they're probably like licorice or something. Cheers for that, Martine, as always. Much appreciated. I reckon I could turn this into some kind of uh, camera mount, or I reckon I could turn it into a cup holder, roll cage mounted cup holder is what I need for my early morning lattes. But yeah, don't pay any attention to what's over here. That's all top secret. Right, another little project I've been working on is this crazy device. So I've always had this, well I've had it for a while, a little race heater, because I took the original one out of the car and then fast realised the windows steam up as soon as you get any ounce of rain. Um, and it is handy to have a heater in a car if you're driving it on the road in the winter in England. So, yeah, I invested in a heater, but obviously trying to mount that up on the inside of the car it's a bit of a challenge, so I've made this thing 
out of just two mil foam X for now, so I can make sure that it all fits, clears everything. And uh, it's basically gonna be like a little funnel. I'll obviously cut it out of aluminium, and it's gonna go up on the original studs, past all the brake lines and reservoir pipes, and crazy wires. Yeah, it's just gonna end up something like that. And then, this, this the machine, it's gonna get bolted up, up there like that, something like that. Then get the water lines on it, and then I'll make some 90 degree funnels. I'm just gonna use two of the ports either side to go up onto the screen, and that'll be man enough to um, demist it, hopefully. So yeah, something to do. So I am back at work which means that I can get this all cut out and I'm just gonna TIG weld it all up together. Watch this. Okay, so that's the heater box all in. My little bracket, I'm gonna have to take it out and put a bit of uh, neoprene up the top, tightening it all down, and I've ordered up all the hoses to go, obviously off the thermostat to here and up to the bottom hose, and I've got some of that um, orange silicon pipe work, and I'll run that up to the ducts in the dashboard. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, I'll catch you guys later. Take it easy. Mm -hmm.